What's up everyone, this is Shoryu Game welcoming you to another KOF 15 trailer analysis. To no one's surprise, we got a gameplay trailer of the previously revealed team Awakened Orochi. We got to see their new design in more details, listen to how they sound like and got an idea of how they play. Orochi Ashiro is looking so sick, he's gonna be one of my mains for sure. But there are some stuff that I find a bit concerning in this trailer, which I will talk about in details at the end of the video. I already spoke about their new design in the previous analysis video, it's a clear reference to Guinness outfit, and a reminder that the trio are also heavily kings of Orochi. There is one small detail that caught my attention in the trailer though. Chris has a feather sticking out from a button. I don't know if it has a meaning, as in to show that he is the actual leader of the Orochi team, especially that his two comrades don't have any feathers in their outfits. It's noteworthy that the default costumes of their non-awakened version are also available for this version as well, just like things used to be in the past. So if you don't like their new design for some reason, you can't really complain now. The new theme sounds incredible, it's kind of a mix between their original rhythmic hallucination and butterfly emerges from chrysalis from O2UM. Can't wait to listen to the full version. Yashiro is shown first in a bombastic intro animation where he mercilessly punches the ground as if he has a personal vendetta against it or something. In all seriousness, Orochi Yashiro has control over the earth element, so it's natural that that would show in his attacks or overall animation. The first combo begins with a close C, forward A and the command grab Mosebu Daishi. It's a classic combo that Yashiro had since 98. Next is a crouch A, standing A, far C. I did not know that could combo. Odoro Daishi, an unblockable special move like the one Shermi has in her regular version. Then he follows that with his grab super. Its name is too long, so I'm not saying it. But this combo was never possible before. You could never cancel his Odoro Daishi into a super. Also, the sound effect heard with each hit is pretty cool. It sounds painful and savage. Yashiro's last combo starts with a close C, forward B. And what is that? Did he just use his standing CD in the middle of a combo? It didn't look like a shutter strike. Seriously, how's that even possible? He continues the combo with his command grab and finally he cancels it into his new climax super. He violently tears out a chunk of the ground, sending Iori who was on top of it in the sky. Then Yashiro jumps to catch him and ruthlessly slam dunk him on the ground. This climax reminds me a lot of the Hulk super and a bit of Alex's as well. Moving on to Orochi Shermi. One thing that I forgot to mention in the previous video is her hair color. They made it purple again, just like how it was originally. For some reason it became red in 2002. Orochi Shermi integrates the lightning element in her fighting style, but that's not the only change. Her personality is also the complete opposite. Unlike in the previous trailer, we can hear her talking now, and she sounds just as cold as she used to. It's amazing that she was voiced by the same voice actor who did her regular version. She sounds like a totally different person. Excellent work. As for her moves display, she starts with a close C, forward B, cancelled into I don't know what that is. It looks a bit like her DP, Takeru Mikazuchi, but I'm not sure if that's the same move. Next is a close D, forward A and Reiji no Tsue, a special move that can only be done in the air and since her command move makes Shermi airborne, it becomes possible to do in this combo. Then she finishes the combo with her level 2 super, also its name is too long to say. This super can be done on the ground or in the air, but it couldn't be done after Reiji no Tsue in the past, it is possible now. The last combo begins with a crouch B, standing A, standing B. Shaijitsu no Odori, a classic special move of hers, level 1 super Anku Kuraikuken and a brand new climax super. Pikachu Mi shoots some electric projectile with her foot, then summons a big lightning from the sky, jumps and uses her body to absorb the electric charge and finally shoots it toward Chizuru with her foot again. Somehow it looks like a football scissor kick. This super is very reminiscent to her head and desperate move in O2UM, with one big difference. 
Shermie wasn't immune to lightning and could get struck herself by the lightning she summoned, which looked hilarious and dumb. But now, not only she is totally fine, she can even use her body as a conduit and direct the trajectory of the lightning bolt. The last member of the Orochi team, Orochi Chris uses purple flame in his awakened version, in addition of becoming a total jerk. He starts his moves showcase by a crouch B, standing A, forward A, and a very familiar special move, Shishiwoka Muhono. It's one of those moves that act like command throws but are not exactly ones. The special move ends with a launcher and can be followed with Chris's light DP, just like in the past. The following sequence starts with a close C, forward A, heavy DP, cancelled into what looks like a new super. From the look of it, I guess it's an anti-air super and from a purely aesthetic angle, it closely resembles the last part of Iori's Wolf Bloom. Both characters use purple flames after all, that originate from the same source. After that, we get to see an interaction between Kyo and Orochi Chris, where we witness the change in Chris's behavior and mannerism. He no longer hides his twisted and arrogant personality. The two having a special dialogue makes sense lore-wise. The Kusunagi clan is part of the sacred treasures who are the natural enemies of the Orochi clan. Not only that, Chris was originally conceptualized as the evil counterpart of Kyo. That's why he has some similar moves to Kyo's, most notably the Ankoko Orochinagi, which he will use in the following combo that starts with a Shishi no Kamo, but instead of a DP, Chris goes for a forward A and a level 2 super Ankoko Orochinagi. The last combo starts with a forward B, EX Kagami wo Hofuru, that causes a ground bounce, followed with a heavy DP, a level 1 Orochinagi, and finally his new climax super. He goes past Kyo and causes him to crumple, flies to the sky and dives at full speed before hitting Kyo with a devastating fire attack. I know that many were disappointed that he doesn't transform into Orochi in his climax, like in 2002, but I personally wasn't expecting it to be the case. KOF 2002 is a dream match and doesn't really follow the canon. Chris can't just transform into Orochi, it's not so simple, especially that the three sacred treasures already dealt with Orochi at the end of 14. And story-wise, Chris wasn't even supposed to be Orochi's host in 97, Yuki was. Chris was like a backup plan, but I admit, it would have been super cool if he still somehow pulled it out and became Orochi for a brief moment. And that concludes the Awakened Orochi team gameplay trailer analysis. Before ending this video, I want to point out some stuff that concerned me. I know that the trailer wasn't inclusive, but still, not seeing some famous move does worry me for a bit. Moves like Yashiro Niragi Daishi, the backbone of his playstyle I would say. This move is everything. This is what allows the mind games to take place. Also his Kujiko Daishi is absent, and we didn't get to see his second super. Not sure if it's the same one as before, a brand new super, or maybe his Armageddon hidden desperate move is the new second super now. Wait and see I guess. As for Shermie, where the heck are her fireballs? That's her signature move. Same for Chris, his own fireballs are also absent in the trailer. I hope they were just running out of time and couldn't show everything in this trailer. It does feature three characters after all, but if these moves aren't part of their move list, that would be a serious letdown. Another thing that I want to point out, while I appreciate the interaction between Kyo and Chris, what about Yamazaki? Doesn't he have something to say to them too? Of all people, he's the one who should have a special intro against at least one of them. Finally, no new stages, eh? I was sort of hoping for an updated version of their badass stage from 97. I was expecting too much, I guess. So, what did you think of the Awakened Orochi team gameplay reveal? Does it make you nostalgic too? What team do you think will be announced next? I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. That's it for now. I hope that was somewhat informative. As always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.